we welcome you back to our celebratory benchmark of our 250th show. And you are about to be our 13,235th viewer. So thank you for that. And we is us broadcasting across the globe back to our Honolulu, Hawaii with you, DeSoto Brown in your Bishop Museum. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, everyone. And me, your host, Martin Despang, half around the world near Munich, Germany. And we continue to have to broadcast under almost unprecedented circumstances of climate change, coronavirus still lingering around and civility at threat through wars all over the world. And one added, which is rather relatively close to me here near Munich, Germany. So that's the circumstances and we're using me over the summer is to sort of to reach out into the world and see what we can learn for the better in best cases. And so when we get to the first slide, uh, we have been in Zurich recently, uh, and then we had been in Dresden last week. And on the way returning uh, to Munich, we stopped by here, which is the former coal pot or formerly heavy steel industry in Germany that isn't as productive and active anymore. Everything had to be converted. And we're revisiting a project here that we had been looking at before, actually at the beginning of the year, as far as evidence-based design, post-occupancy evaluating, life cycle assessment of public transportation, because in wrapping up our a report on the uh, Midtown flunk area around the Alamoana Mall, which one of the legs of development was supposed to be our heavy rail, but uh, we have to wait for a little longer to even it coming to this area, right? So that's why we're maybe looking into this one here. This is not elevated, this is actually underground. And I think I we talked before this, so the once I was at Costco, Illy uh, location close to you. And there was a guy chatting me up and he said he's an engineer. We started talking and he said, you know, Martin, for the same money of this elevated train, you could have actually put it on the ground. And you might immediately be thinking, well, okay, we're coastal, right? And we're lava rock. But he said there are other parts of the world where that is equally the case. So, you know, maybe, but now I guess it's too late for that. But what it's not too late is to talk about the attractiveness of public transportation, especially in these days of that these crises are intertwined, right? And the fossil um, that it all comes down to basically makes it, you know, people used to move out west uh, on Oahu to uh, live cheaper uh, because um, even driving all the way back to Honolulu was still cheaper than the high cost of uh, living. Uh, housing wise in Honolulu, but that changes now with gas prices being through the roof. They're around like more than five gallons over there with you, DeSoto, right? Yes, and like they the are. Equivalent of seven, um, um, seven and a half dollars here in Germany. So uh, public transportation, you know, is then maybe an alternative. Uh, here, the government has just started an initiative that's called the nine euro ticket. So you pay nine euros flat for a month and you can travel anywhere um, with any public transportation. So metros, uh, subways, um, trains, commuter trains. The only thing you can't use is the very convenient and high uh, speed ICA inner city express. That is unfortunately still for the more well-off people, but all the other people can now have a cheaper ticket but we currently have our second youngest son on his odyssey back to Würzburg, which is two hours usually with the ICE. He's like more than six hours. He has to do a couple of cha train changes and stuff like that, which is sort of not fun. So it's well meant, good ambitions, but again, it's not quite figured out. But uh, what else can we learn from this project is sort of that we haven't been looking at before when we were there in the, in the winter. Well, if I'm remembering correctly, you said that you had never seen this at night. Is that, that correct? Is, that shame on me. That is correct. I never <laughs> took or had the chance. I always was in a rush and had to go through at daytime. 
And as you see at the bottom left, this is us now. We visited the big boys and their ladies there. And uh, we were reporting uh, in Zurich from an unusual tropical night, the temperatures, which they're always in Honolulu up in the 80s. And this is rare here. And we hit it again here in Bochum, which is that city here. So it was a very sort of a warm night with people out. And that's uh, what the picture at the bottom sort of capture is that we said it almost feels like, well, maybe not quite exotic, but maybe not quite tropical, although the temperature was like that, but exotic. Um, there's a taco restaurant in the back with a saguaro cactus sign. There is this, there's construction going on still, not the, the, the station, but around it, the street work. And they have this trailer with some green uh, graffiti on. And there is actually people sitting outdoors, which we encourage people should do more in Hawaii. We can do this all the time. And the pandemic actually, as bad as it is, has helped to foster outdoor sitting and eating quite a bit. See the people there with their candle in their little glass lantern. And glass lantern is in, in big scale what that project becomes at night, right? Yes. It, it glows. Yes. And I, I think we need to point out to everybody that you helped design this building. And the fact that you've never seen it at night glowing many years later is quite astonishing but it's finally it's good that you finally did yeah and the show quote at the top uh second from top right is actually our competition model and you see it glowing in 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 blue and that's actually how it looks when you go around i unfortunately didn't take it from that side but the sides of the slats are painted blue from the other side from the entrance side but again here i took the pictures from from the other side so that was our promise in the competition phase this project uh, took um, 10 years from the one competition to completion. And now it took me many more years to see finally that major uh, design effect. And we wanted to explain, this is uh, mostly it's all about cost, right? In a capitalized commodified culture. Uh, this was not the, the effect that sort of lantern, you know, street art effect is not really something expensive. It's a simple uh, light uh, tube uh, trough at the top of the balustrade there. And then it's encased in, in a U-profile uh, covered with a, uh, with a frosted or sandblasted glass that diffuses it. And that's pretty much it. And then it bounces off the, the slats itself. So it's not much you know, extra effort or money spent. So that's what we're encouraging. Uh, how to encourage people to use public transportation is obviously to get the cost down. There's other cities where they offer it for free, right? Portland and the core of Portland, riding the train is free. And here again, with a nine euro ticket gets closer to that if you break it down to your daily ride. But we also want to point out that um, you can make it more attractive through design, good design. And again, how do you find good design? There's this great tradition of competition culture that you just don't commission the next, the best, next best one you know, or you're, you know, have some ties to that yep. could also cause corruption issues and inequity amongst architects. If you make it an open competition or at least an invited competition, which this one was, it's a, it's a more fair process, right? Yes. Okay, uh, then leave that food for thought about transportation and move on to the next slide, which gets us to the next stop, which is uh, the city of Göttingen. And it's one of, as uh, in Oahu, our island, our first uh, most powerful economy um, is, no surprise, tourism. Our second one is the military. Our third one is us, meaning my employer, the university. And that's uh, similar to Göttingen. Göttingen is a big university town and in fact, one of the oldest universities in Germany. And they asked us uh, some years ago to design their first off the grid post fossil. That's what we need these days more than ever. So that was pioneering and ahead of the time preschool for the children of the students and the teachers. And to my knowledge, we know this fairly well because we did a couple of shows about the inventory of buildings on 
our uh, UH Manoa campus. And I don't recall we even have a facility like that in Soto, right? I couldn't begin to tell you. I'm not part of that system, but I do know that there at least is one that uh, is part or has been. I think it just shut down. There was a government one in downtown Honolulu where the uh, in the civic center across the street from the uh, Board of Water Supply. But oh. if uh, and I think that just I think that just closed. That was built on top of a parking building, a parking structure. Oh, okay. So that was an innovative idea. Um, yeah. And a good one, but what you did with this particular one also did has a number of innovative techniques, and one of them in particular was to make it a passive home or a passive structure at least, in terms of uh, keeping it warm during the winter. But as you have said, as summers become increasingly hot and in fact uncomfortably hot, even in Germany, that becomes a problem when the weather is hot because the interior becomes too warm instead of just warm enough. Yeah, we were actually hitting 102 degrees in Dresden uh, around that time we were driving to my parents. And again, um, that's sort of, you know, still a good problem to have if we look at the world, right? Um, Ron uh, reminds us of Phoenix, Arizona, and I looked it up. Uh, we're having every day, I mean, that was one weekend, we're having every day between 105 and 110. And there is tragic reports about, uh, you know, dozens of homeless dying. So it always hits the people at the lower end of the food chain because rich people can keep their AC running, which never mind increases the problem of uh, fueling uh, climate change, literally and figuratively. And the poor people pull the pull the short stick. And before the show, we were discussing how this will change sort of, um, you know, climate change migration, and it will ch surely do. But you said, rightly so, then the poor people really don't have a chance unless they get a nine euro ticket. But where are they going? And do they even have the chance to go and the means right. to go beyond right. that right. to go anywhere else? So right. That's a big right. global problem. But again, then like places in Pakistan and in India, where there is this, so we're, we're feeling it, we're really feeling it the hard way. So how can architecture help in that case, as we all build this way? Again, we don't need the winter condition, keeping it warm in the, in the winter. And what we learned from this one here, again, um, evidence-based design, post-occupancy evaluation, like cycle assessment wise, as these are all American firms of looking at buildings, uh, how they perform uh, once they're completed that the, the passive house works pretty well for keeping you warm in the wintertime, but it's challenged in keeping you cool in the summertime. And that's what we need in Hawaii, first and foremost, all the time, right? But um, the message we want to send there, we were very, very warmly welcomed by the director who you see next to our exotic escapism expert, Susanna, uh, left of her at the top left picture. Um, that uh, that's Mrs. Sommerfeld, who was uh, just very happy with the building. And she said, this is just like, just too good to be true. It, re it really works well. And don't be afraid because there's nothing to lose. We can only win to save our world. And there were things, uh, the picture at the bottom left, uh, they were, again, feeling it getting a little too warm in the summertime. So what they did is they added um, uh, some reflective uh, foil to the top part of the window glass front. And this is something that reminds us of this show volume topic of blue glass. And Ron had rightly so being quite critical uh, about that subject matter, because if you're just making a glass box and try to keep it cool with blue glass, that's not working. And this is the living proof of evidence because we're having the same temperatures here, even higher because you're not hitting too often. I think late summer, right? You're hitting uh, the hundreds quite, you know. We never, no, we months. never, we never oh, do. You, we never do. You never. So it's no. even hotter here then, right? So yes. even yes. worse conditions. Yes. And we still need the, uh, the retractable uh, roll down screen shading that the building initially had. And they actually added another one at the lower part of the window that we tried to get by without because of the depth of the frame and the initial one, you could still keep the view, but I guess they had to negotiate between the view and the keeping cool. And 
The problem is not the high. Uh, we actually had June 21st yesterday. That's when the sun is the highest. And when this sun angle, basically the, uh, the, 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 the upper uh, shading all the way down, uh, the sun will never hit the glass. But when it gets fall or in the spring, when the sun is already or, or, or again lower, that's where the passive pulse is basically challenged. But again, these are all good problems to have. And these are solvable. And you should see this as basically prototyping and experimenting for a good cause. And there is, again, there's nothing to lose. Uh, what else do we see here? We see the kids engaging with the concrete. I guess these must have been more wondering, probably intern from all over the world. Another good thing is here, this is a bilingual um, uh, kindergarten, or as we call it, so preschool, as you call it. So uh, they will learn to speak your uh, native language, uh, DeSoto, and mine. So they will grow up in both. And they will grow up in a building that is not consuming fossil fuel. They do. And they will become the stewards of, of doing that because they don't have to unlearn fossil as we have to, or even the generation we educate, our emerging generation. But they have it already in their habit, right? Because they don't yeah. know any different. Right. And that's, that's the big key. And yes. we also have what we see on the right. Uh, we have a green roof, which every building in Hawaii should have. And this is an intensive green roof. This is thick. You can grow heavy stuff on there. We had some disagreement with the landscape architect to put a stupid fence there. And the director was asking me, she said, I would like to, to uh, have my brakes on the roof. And she once went, but she said, I had to get over the stupid fence. What is that doing there? And I said, well, let's get back to the upper administration and and try to get rid of that thing. And she's also doing back to the top left image there. She says, well, instead I, I picked my yoga mat and I lounge on the bottom of the frames, which was exactly how we intended it to be the, for the kids who do that as well. So again, uh, this is a good segue then into our next slide because this building here is uh, of concrete nature and uh, basically um, concrete frames that could uh, potentially keep you cool. And how about this building? This is back home. Where is that and what is that, Soto? Well, it's on P.E. Coy Street and it is a 1970s building. And as you can see, it's got this concrete uh, sort of framework on the exterior, which surround the glass windows. And one of the things that you and I were talking about before the show is the advantage this building already has in its construction in terms of it being able to accommodate exterior shading. And we had a discussion for my question, what are the advantages and disadvantages of, of exterior shading versus interior shading? In other words, if you've got some kind of baffle or something, the sunshade, what's the difference? Well, the difference is very pronounced because keeping that on the exterior and thinking about perhaps, for example, retrofitting this building, means that you cut a substantial amount of uh, temperature rise if it's on the outside versus the inside. Because once the sun rays have come through the glass of a window, and then you put a baffle behind that, you're creating a heat island. You're creating a, a group of a little enclosed space that's going to heat up a great deal. And you pointed out in one of the projects you've worked on, in such a situation, the glass actually got hot enough to crack because it was such high heat. So yeah. what you want to do is put exterior rather than interior shading. And even though this building doesn't have it, it, it is constructed in a way that perhaps could accommodate it. Yeah. And in all honesty, that was uh, talking about learning by doing and experimenting. That was my first kindergarten I did that we did a show about also where we also featured this one here the previous one on the previous page. And, you know, again, there's nothing to lose. You got to try out and you only find out by trying and experimenting. So, yeah, this is, again, as you said, this is by Ernest Hara, this building. And I, I, I will encourage the audience uh, to be better than me because I, again, consider myself to be an interest in, and I'm an interested citizen and I have some preoccupation in the discipline, obviously. But even me, I always knew of the building because I drove by and I liked the building, but I didn't take the time to find out who the author of the building is. And it took this show here preparation to do this. 
So we can all do this. There's a website out there that's called Emporis. It's sort of a real estate um, organization. And you just type in the location and the building and it gives you the building data. Most likely, um, you know, a year of build, engineers involved and also architects involved. Ernest Hera, we know very well because he is the father of John and the grandfather of Mayumi, who we had on the show for multiple times. So this is a multi-generational family um, and uh, endeavor. And they actually, in fact, moved into their Mayumi's grandfather's and John father's building here, uh, where Bund had helped them moving because they consolidated and made their office more, more efficient and effective. So now they're in the building. And again, putting it into the context of Zeitgeist at the top right, we have the show quote about that we checked on presidents and how they relate to architecture where they grew up and where they lived. This is the era of uh, Jimmy Carter. And it's also uh, preceding, uh, no, it's, it's, after, it's after the first oil crisis in 73. And then, you know, that Jimmy really was uh, learning the lessons from, or at least tried, I just recently, which we quote up there, um, the, his uh, crisis of confidence speech from 1979, and I would encourage you to do that. When you do, I'm, I'm sure you feel the same as me, like, oh my God, how current is this? What he said could or should have our you know, uh, secretary of uh, environment or even economy could have, should have, would have said that at this point and saying, get off fossil fuel, get off, you know, political dependency, all these things. Oh, my God, there is so much more tragically, uh, you know, current uh, again, one has to say. So, again, reconnecting to Jimmy and basically saying, OK, get us off that. Let's, you know, boost and beef up uh, renewable energies. Uh, let's um, optimize things. Let's, uh, you know, use more public transportation. All the things we're talking about, he was already talking about. We just got to reconnect to that. And, and kind of undo all the, the Reagan and post era and Reagan era that we're, that we're still in, right? And we can do it again. Yep. And as you said, you know, we could, this, this building is perfect to be basically um, adapted uh, and could, uh, could carry uh, additional, the same uh, roll down screens that we have on the frames of the previous uh, slide kindergarten. As one looks here, there's a sort of double line uh, above and below the, the window frames. This is where easily that could take place. I'm sure Ernest, John, and Mayumi wouldn't mind. And a, a building that's already, you know, principally very bioclimatic um, because it's, again, having these deep frames that um, keep the sun away. But here, I guess um, it, was, it was put um, around the building uh, the same way to all orientations. So uh, you would only then need actually the extra shading to the east and the west elevation because the south elevation, the frames already doing it and to the north, you don't need it much. So it will only need it to two elevations and then uh, you can make them again with uh, same as the kindergarten with uh, a sun sensor and retractable. So when they're up, it wouldn't even, you know, um, basically compromise the very fine legacy, um, you know, appearance of, of that building. So, again, something to look back into because these are the, this is the legacy of that neighborhood we're talking about. That's buildings that if you keep your eyes and your, your brain open, uh, these are, this, is, this, is the, this is the precedent that's right there. And that's what we're not understanding in next slide. Um, why is it the way they're portraying it down there, which, you know, nice try with gentle watercolor wash to try to lure us into the idea that this would be somehow green and green being bioclimatic. No, it's not. The show quotes up there basically is what it really is. This is, yep. this is red and orange. This is hot. Uh, there is no consideration of environment, of bioclimatics. Um, and uh, because all these buildings are just like hit by the sunset in particular. Yeah. And then they, you know, in all honesty, they should have been water color washed in orange and you know, in, <laughs> in red because that's, that's reality. 
Yeah. And this is this is basically trying to fool us, uh, brainwash us, brain water color wash us. And and what you just pointed out about what Jimmy Carter had said back in the 1970s, that was a time of not only energy crises because there was more than one, but also the incredible rise in costs of energy. And that's what we're going through again right now. And this is a cycle that we keep repeating. Energy costs go down, everybody forgets about it, turns up the air conditioning, turns up the heat, and doesn't pay any attention to cons conservation. And then yeah. suddenly when it becomes expensive again, suddenly everybody panicked. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it came out of the blue. Oh, we didn't know that was gonna happen. We couldn't think of that possibly happening. Well. You got to think ahead and you got to plan for these things rather than pretend they never are going to happen because they are going to happen and it's happening again, yet again. And yeah. I'm certainly old enough to have lived through the 1970s energy crisis, other ones, as well as the one we're going through now. Yeah. They're always going to happen. And you at least didn't have my childhood dream, big boat Straßenkreuzer at the gas station. <laughs> no. Give you gas. I mean, you at least had the German Beetle and Buck. I did. I and did. air cool one that we were reporting about, but still. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And it, once again, top ride, very top ride show quotes. They're kind of, again, they're having dementia or, you know, whatever problem they have and forgetting the very best of practice in their air, the Alamoana, that's how they call the area, the Alamoana building. And the very top right, and that very top right is showing also a glowing, but this is reflective glowing. This is not absorbing glowing like the symphony, which is the one to the left of there. Uh, but these are the sun retractable louvers um, with their either gold or dull uh, aluminum side basically being shut and shielding the sun off and, you know, making it glow, but inside it's cool. So, you know, how, how sad is that, that they basically have that there? They should have done their homework. We should send them our shows. So hopefully for the next high rises, they do better. And how might one could do it better if we want to spend some time next week. And until then, you please stay all uh, mentally and physically cool. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.